If it's not too much trouble, <laughs> then please come to lie onto your back. And I would suggest you choose a place where you have enough space to roll over onto your belly and roll back onto your back because we are going to do this a lot. And then when you lie on your back, feel how you rest, your contact with the floor and focus mainly, bring your attention to your shoulder area, your shoulder blades, the medial borders of the shoulder blades, the spine of your shoulder blades, we had these terms in the last lesson, and your spine itself. Are there places where you feel there's more contact, where the spine presses down harder than in other places up to your neck, or is everything kind of the same? So how does that feel like? And maybe also bring your attention to your shoulders, the top of your shoulders, the head of the humerus. If you feel how far they are away from the floor, it might be surprising. Yeah, okay, so that was our little scan. For the beginning, our reference, we will feel later in this lesson, and then we will start with the movement. So please come to roll over onto your front side and come to lean on both elbows, prop yourself up on both elbows. So come to lean onto your elbows and find a good spot for your elbows. So maybe walk your elbows a little bit to the left and to the right and up and down until you have a good spot where you can lean and you might want to support yourself with a pillow just so you won't have any lower back troubles because of this lesson. Okay, so you're propped up on your elbows and then the movement. So focus on your sternum, your manubrium and bring your breastbone a little bit lower to the floor and away from the floor. So you let your chest sink closer to the floor and then you raise your chest away from the floor. And on the opposite side of the sternum is the spine. So you could also say you're raising your spine and you're sinking your spine in between your shoulder blades. So when you sink the spine closer to the floor, the shoulder blades come closer to each other. And when you raise yourself, the shoulder blades they move away from each other. So it's not that your head is going up and down. It's not a neck exercise. Actually, maybe you want to fix your eyes on the horizon in front of you. So that's our movement, to sink the spine in between the shoulder blades and to raise the spine and make it a little bit slower so you can feel the differences in between your shoulder blades. So your right shoulder might work a little bit different than your left one. But what are the qualities? What, what is different or are they the same? How, how far up can you rise, raise your spine and how close to the floor can you come, can you sink down while still being propped up onto your elbows? And then we will take an early rest just to compare. So please roll back onto your back. And if you have enough space, that's not no trouble at all. And when you're on your back, now feel again how is your spine, your shoulder blades. How are you resting? How are your shoulders resting on the floor? just from this one movement. Okay, and now we will, <laughs> that's already a difference, isn't it? So we will improve upon it. Please come back onto your front side and do the same movement. Prop yourself up onto the elbows and you can touch your hands together or can have them apart. And then raise your spine and sink your spine in between your shoulder blades. Do this movement again and again and again and make it faster and faster and see before we did it slowly and now do it faster and to make it faster you might have to do it a little bit smaller <laughs> okay and fall over roll over come onto your back and see ah first of all a rest ah that's nice and also see the changes the improvements from from 
moving a little bit faster, see if you can make it fast. Okay, and then back onto the front side. And we will try to improve even more, improve this movement, improve the shoulders even more. So extend your right arm upwards <coughs> on the floor, not completely straight and not completely bent. And you can rest your head in your left hand or on your left elbow somewhere on the floor, totally up to you. And have your right hand relaxed. And the movement is to lift your right elbow a little. Lift your right elbow and keep your right hand relaxed and then bring your right elbow back to the floor. And of course, we're interested in the shoulders. So even though you focus on lifting your right elbow, also be aware of what, how that movement presents itself in your right shoulder blade, the movement of your right shoulder blade. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Lift the right elbow slowly up a little bit and let it down slowly, 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 slowly. So we had this in the first lesson. This can do, a, this can make a big difference. If you lift it slowly, maybe hold it a little bit and then let it sink slowly, 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 slowly until your right arm is resting again and let's take a break so please roll back onto your back i was not kidding with the rolling was i so and feel <laughs> yes wow so feel the difference between your right shoulder and your left shoulder from this one movement and then we roll back onto the front side and prop yourself up onto the elbows and see when you lift and lower your spine when you sink your spine in between your shoulder blades if that's different if your right shoulder is different from your left just from this one little movement of lifting the right elbow now we continue again please extend your right arm upwards on the floor not completely straight not completely bent and lift your right elbow again and keep your right hand totally relaxed a very elegant movement so the right elbow comes up and the right hand is very relaxed and it's your right hand is hanging down from your right lower arm like a little towel a wet towel just totally relaxed so you lift your right elbow the hand is dangling down and finally lifted into the air and then back down to the floor so the fingers touch to the floor first and then slide and then the wrist comes down to the floor and then the right elbow comes down to the floor and then you are as much on the floor as you are on the floor and then again lift your right elbow and at some point the wrist is lifting and the fingers are dragged over the floor and then the fingers leave the floor and your arm is up and then back down again. Now a refinement. When you lift your right elbow, rotate your arm in a way so that your pinky finger is leaving the floor first and your index finger is one of the fingers that leave the floor last. And then when you return to the floor, the index finger is one of the first fingers to touch the floor and the pinky finger last. And then roll back onto the back and let's see what difference that made. And then roll back onto your front side, prop yourself up on your elbows and see when you sink and raise your spine in between your shoulder blades. 
the spine is also changing. It's not just the shoulder blades and how well you are able to direct or let go of your head, how everything plays together. This gets better and better. Okay, now we continue. So now we will catch up with the left arm. So extend your left arm, not completely straight, not completely bent, and start to lift your left elbow off the floor, left elbow off, off the floor. And of course, slowly and gradually and back again. And then more and more, you can have with the left hand relaxed and lift the arm higher until the pinky finger leaves the floor and the index and middle finger leave the floor and the hand is up in the air and then slowly, slowly back to the floor again. And then we take a break on the back. So roll onto your back. Ah, okay. So, and then when you compare your right shoulder area to your left shoulder area, yeah, there we go. So how can we improve this even further? So please come back onto your front side. And we will do something similar but different. So this time extend your right arm overhead on the floor, but keep your arm straight and make a fist with your right hand so that the thumb or the, the base joint of your thumb is pointing towards the ceiling and your pinky finger is on the floor and your arm is straight. And the movement is to lift the straight arm off the floor. So the whole arm is straight. You lift it off the floor and bring it back to the floor again. And again, your head could be resting on the floor, on your arm, in your left hand, or you could hold it up. And of course, keep on breathing. See what you have to do with your whole body to support the lifting of your arm. And then make it a little bit faster. <laughs> yes, like a pounding, beating of the floor. Take, of course, take good care of yourself, not too hard, don't hurt yourself, just the movement. So the movement becomes very clear. It's a very different, not very different, but it's a different movement than before. And then just stay there, take a short rest on your belly. We will continue right away. Stay on your belly. And just think. Think with your kinesthetic thinking. So you're resting on the floor, on your belly, with your right arm straight extended upwards. And imagine the movement. So don't move, just imagine the movement. How would you lift the extended right arm off the floor? So bit by bit, slowly lift in your mind, in your mind's eye, in your kinesthetic sensing, how you, the right elbow would come off, how the fist would come off, how the shoulder blade would move, how the rest of yourself, the spine, the pelvis, your legs, uh, your feet even, which one, the left leg does something else than the right leg, and, and how everything comes together to lift your right arm like this off the floor, suspend it in the air for a little bit, and then slowly, slowly bring the arm back to the floor and whew, relax on the floor. And let's do it again in your mind one more time. So just imagine the movement. The arm, the right arm is straight. It 
it lifts, which part lifts first, and the shoulder blade, how does the shoulder blade move, how does everything move, the arm comes up away from the floor and then suspended in the air a moment maybe for a breath and then slowly sink back in your imagination the arm to the floor until the arm is resting on the floor again. Okay, and then of course after this planning in our mind's eye do it for real again. So lift your right arm and see, wow, <laughs> maybe this planning made a huge difference and bring it back and do it very slowly or do it very fast. Play a little bit more with this movement and then roll onto your back. Let's take a break on the back. But of course, it's not just a break, it's a reference. We uh, on the back to feel how the right arm, wow, the right shoulder blade area, the spine even, how you rest now on the floor, how you perceive yourself on the floor, see this also improves. Now of course we need to catch up with the left arm, so please come to lie on your front side, again roll over on your front, but not without checking first the situation of lifting and lowering the spine, so lean on both elbows and raise yourself up, wow, <laughs> this is maybe a lot higher than before and let the spine sink in between the shoulder blades and notice the qualities there are shaking, which shoulder just moves better, you can feel like the angles, the, the curves it's taking, the support, the power, is there a difference between the right and the left arm and maybe there is, hopefully there is, that what we're doing has some effect and then Come to rest your head on, on your arm or your right hand and extend your left arm overhead on the floor. Make a fist, make a straight left arm. That's our movement. We are catching up with the left arm and start to lift your left arm off the floor. And slowly, slowly bring it back down again. Of course, we can compare in our mind's eye how the left arm works as opposed to or differently than the right arm. So please, of course, continue with the movement. See, see how you do it in various configurations with your head or with your breathing or how do you do it? How do you lift the straight arm off the floor when you do it very slowly? And also try to do it a little bit faster and faster and faster. And to do it fast, you have to do it maybe smaller. To get really a feel for this movement. So maybe you want to hammer on different places a little bit more to the left, a little bit more to the right, just to see how can you further improve this movement? How can you put everything together? And then who rest on your front side. We will come back to our exploration in our mind, a little planning in our mind's eye with the kinesthetic think thinking. Bring your attention to yourself, to your arm. Left arm is straight, you have a fist, and then you start to lift your left arm, not for real, only in your mind. Which part of your left arm lifts off first? Is it the elbow? Is it the fist? <sighs> Do you have your elbow pointing towards the floor or to the outside? How is the rotation of your arm? How does your shoulder blade swing, move? How does your spine react, your head, your breathing? When you lift the left arm, straight left arm off the floor in your mind's eye, suspend it in the air and then slowly, slowly, slowly let it sink back. We plan within our imagination until the left arm is resting again on the floor. <laughs> Lots of work. So let's continue with some real movements. Now lift the left arm again and see if this imagination, this planning made a difference. Wow, and maybe it just did. And then Let's come back onto the back, roll onto the back, take a rest and see if the arms level out. If oh Wow, <laughs> that's quite an improvement, isn't it? Just by resting, just how well you're resting on the floor, your contact with the floor, how you snuggle against the floor. But we don't stop there, we can go even further, we can make it better and better. It's not just about fixing something, but 
there's no limit to improvement. So let's continue, roll over onto your front side. Prop yourself up onto your elbows and, and see how the sinking and the raising of the spine is uh, working now. And then stay on your elbows and push your right shoulder closer to your right ear. So you push your right shoulder towards your right ear and maybe you can feel that the shoulder will push the head a little bit to the left. So allow that. Allow your head to be pushed to the left as if you would look towards your left foot. So turn the head to, to look to your left foot when you drag your right shoulder upwards. A couple of times and then don't do that. Keep uh, look, look at the skyline, at the horizon and bring your right shoulder closer to your ear and further apart a couple of times. And we will continue straight away with the left shoulder. So do the same movement with your left shoulder. Bring your left shoulder closer to your left ear. and. At first, allow your left shoulder to push your head to the right. So, and accept that. Push your head, let your left shoulder push your head to the right as if you would look towards your right foot a couple of times. Or you could keep looking to your right foot and continue with the shoulder movements up and down. Or is it forwards and backwards? And then, again, this is almost like the Sphinx. In, in Egypt, isn't it? Look forward towards the horizon and just move your left shoulder forwards and backwards. So we did the shoulders separately and now we need a rest. Roll back onto your back. <laughs> and see, that made another difference. Isn't that something? Every movement, every exploration. We explore the movement, that's something new and we can get better at it and it gets better. How far can we improve it? Depends on how many movements we have, how much time we invest. So let's continue, come onto your front side. One last movement, I think then this should be enough for a session or a repeatable session, but first check, lift your spine and how flexible has your spine become. Lift your spine and lower your spine in between your shoulder blades. Sink your spine in between your shoulder blades and observe the quality of movement, how much aware you are of the movement, how much aware you are of the movement of your neck, of your spine, of your shoulder blades, how you lean against your <laughs> elbows and so forth. So one last movement, prop yourself up onto your hands. So you're leaning on your straight arms and in this position, lower your spine in between your shoulder blade, shoulder blades and raise your spine. So that's a lot more demanding, of course, also on the lower back depends on how flexible you are. We will continue in the next lesson, in the next video. So let's take a last rest. Let's check how it is to lie on the back now. Ah, yes, and take a rest together and feel how you're lying now, as opposed to the beginning of the lesson. might be quite a difference how much of yourself is resting now on the floor. Isn't that, isn't that quite something? The last thing, the only thing left to do is to get up and stand, to face the world in standing. And this lesson is quite amazing. It can change quite a lot in the shoulder, shoulder, shoulder area, which is the partner in crime with the spine. And maybe you will 
not is not just an improvement in the shoulders, but if you had like nerve pain down your legs or a sciatic pain or something with your feet, maybe this also improved quite a lot. Let's see, let's come up. Ah, how is it in standing? How are your shoulders? <laughs> how is your walking? How are you as a person? The lesson was only something like 20-25 minutes, but it became dark here in Saigon, Vietnam. The night falls very, very quickly. Spectacular. So I hope you enjoyed exploring this lesson just as much as I enjoyed teaching it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next lesson. Now we'll... <laughs> <laughs> then I need to edit this. <laughs>